Welcome back, Turners. Uh, for today's project, I'm going to make a little turning aid. It's a bowl depth measuring gauge. Uh, it was inspired by Reed Gray, who also is known as Robo Hippie. Uh, if you don't know who he is, uh, awesome uh, wood turner. Um, check out my channel. I've got a, a link to his channel. Go check out his videos. Um, something that Reed does is uh, he has something that he uses called a cheater stick. Okay, and he uses a tape measure, and together in combination, he uses them to measure how far he needs to hollow in a bowl before uh, he hits the bottom or you know breaks through during the turning. So uh, let me show you a little bit about what that looks like, and then a little bit about this tool that he's inspired. Okay, so in, in one of Reed's older videos, he um, demonstrates his bowl depth measuring technique using the cheater stick. And the cheater stick is based on the distance from uh, the headstock housing to the edge of the chuck jaws. Okay, And they might vary by the chuck and the jaws that you use. Um, I use this combination all the time. These never come off. So this is my cheater stick. Okay, for this set. And then what he does is he measures the distance to the edge of a bowl. So say for instance, if I were working a bowl here right now, and the bowl were going to be, let's say, um, a little over three and a half inches deep. Okay, we come out to this nine inch mark. Okay. And then what he would do is he placed the cheater stick to line up to that nine inch mark. And then he would measure inside the bowl to see how deep he got, okay? And what happens is, um, if this is the edge of the bowl, you can see the deeper you go, the closer you're getting to the bottom, right, of the chuck, and then that would help keep you from cutting through. So that got me to thinking. So now I'd like to show you what I've been thinking about. Okay, so what I've got here is some scraps that were laying around my shop. I've got some of this, I believe it's quarter inch plywood, might even be Baltic birch, I don't remember. It's fairly rigid though, and uh, for extra rigidity, I'm going to double it up. Okay, So this is going to be one component of this uh, uh, gauge that I have in mind. Also, I've got a 5 8 inch dowel and a piece of PVC. Okay, um, This would have been better if the dowel had been um, 9 16 it would have fit into the PVC better. Uh, but uh, I'm going to actually just sand this down a little bit at the lathe to get it down to a point where it's going to fit in this PVC. Oh, there was one last item. Uh, it's, a, it's a hose clamp. I don't remember when or where I picked this up. Probably auto parts store. It's got one of these nifty little turnkey things on it. And it just happens to fit this PVC that I have. Um, I'm going to be using it to tighten the PVC around the dowel. Okay, So again, uh, all shop scraps. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my table saw to cut this PVC uh, to the exact same length as my cheater stick. Okay, so. I'm going to set the stop block on the sled so that I will get exactly the same measurement. Okay. And now I'm just going to cut this. Okay, I also have two other cheater sticks um, for two other sets of jaw chuck combos. So I'm going to go ahead and they're different lengths. I'm going to go ahead and cut them out as well because these are going to be interchangeable parts on this gauge, which will make more sense when you see it. Okay, so I have now three lengths of the PVC tubing. And what I'm going to do, each of these, if I got the right side, you'll see it has a marking on there that might be hard to see. This is the cheater stick for my number two 
or smaller jaws. So I'm just going to write on here with some Sharpie, number two, I'm going to use the same annotation, small. Okay. So now I know what this is for. I'm going to do this now with each of these. This was my number three long. Okay. And then finally, the number four jumbo. Okay. Now there's no forgetting which one is which when I'm using the jaws because um, this is just how my brain works and this is going to help me remember. So now we're going to go to the bandsaw and we're going to cut a little curve at the end of this because that. Where do I put it? The little um, tubing clamps, the hose clamps, are going to uh, fasten onto this doweling. Okay, here I am at the little bandsaw, and again, all I want to do is put in a little bit of a kerf um, on the PVC so that that um, hose clamp will actually have uh, a little bit of room to tighten the PVC onto the uh, Dowling. Okay, this is just to give you an idea of how that hose clamp is going to go over that portion that now has a kerf in it. So as you tighten that, this doesn't fit yet, but this is going to slide through here and it's going to tighten on to this. Okay, so I was just doing some measurements and now it's time for me to cut this. It's a 48 inch dowel that I had left over. I'm going to cut this into approximately 16 inch segments. Um, that is roughly the deepest hollowing I am likely to be doing on this little 12 inch swing lathe. So um, that gives me plenty of depth to work with. And the nice thing is if I need to go deeper in the future, I, to me that's about a 12 inch deep vessel maximum. Um, and uh, if I need to go deeper, then I can get a new dowel and uh, make it longer. So that's going to be the easy part of this. Okay, I'm going to go cut these out on the table saw real quick. All right, for this next step, I'm going to take my PSI collet chuck. I've got the uh, 5 8 collet. And um, I'm going to chuck this up uh, so that I can sand the dowel from being 5 8 down to something closer to 9 16 because that's ultimately the size that's going to fit in that PVC. And again, I'm not going to actually turn this. It doesn't... Uh, I don't want to take off too much either. I just want to get down to a nice, um, nice fit inside that uh, PVC. Okay, so I got this to a place where I can loosen that clamp. This will slide, uh, there you go, 
It'll slide back and forth on the dowel um, so I can tighten it up anywhere I need to. One of the things I'm going to do is, um, so again, each of these is interchangeable. Since I made this dowel the same thickness, all of these will fit on here. Okay, So now I have my different cheater sticks, if you will. Okay, Now this uh, needs to have a cross member here that goes up against the rim of a bowl. Okay, So that's what the plywood is going to be. So what I'm going to do, the maximum width of any bowl I'm going to make on this little lathe is probably, I may push it up to 14, but I'm, that means I want probably the cross member here to be about 15 inches across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to cut this off at 15 inches. Okay, so I'm going to keep this. And then I'm going to cut two strips out of this and laminate it together. So I'm going to do that on the table saw. Okay, what I've got now is I've um, got my two uh, strips, so I made these one and a half inches wide, and I've made a second set, because I'm going to make two of these cross pieces, I'm going to end up making two of these tools. Um, one is going to be a gift for a friend of mine, and uh, this is something that I'm also, I cut a little bit extra out, let me show that to you, one's a little square, and there's another little piece, and these are going to go here. Because what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, as I glue this together, as I sandwich this together, I'm actually going to remove some of these um, layers here so that this can fit down into this opening. Because, so essentially, so you can kind of get the picture of what's going on here. Um, this is going to rest against the edge of the bowl. And, well, here's the, an example of the tool. This is going to find the depth of the bottom of the hole. This part, as this goes in deeper and deeper into the bowl, um, I want to be able to find out how far from that bottom edge is my, you know, this cheater stick portion. Okay, so um, that's why I'm going to, I'm going to mark this. I'm going to take the PVC and I'm going to mark out the section that I'm going to take then to the bandsaw. I'm going to leave these intact. There'll be a hole here. Okay? But these are I'm going to just cut out a little bit of a U-shape so that this can recess down to it but stop. Okay? So in other words it's going to kind of go like this. It's going to stop once it gets to this level because that will be if I get all the way to here then I've gone through the bottom of my bowl. Okay, so I don't want to get all the way down to the bottom, but I want to be able to get as thin as I'd like to get here. Okay, and uh, so that's basically how it works. So the next thing I need to do then is mark these out, cut them on the bandsaw. Okay, and then I need to glue all this stuff up together. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've marked out the shape that I'm going to cut on the bandsaw, but instead of just moving right to the bandsaw, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue these together first to give me a little bit of rigidity um, and so I can get the, the basically the pattern cut on, out on both. Okay, now I'm going to um, hold these together with these little Harbor Freight spring clamps. They're cheap and effective and um, do exactly what I need them to do to just get this to bond.
All right, guys, I've got uh, these glued up now. Really, really rigid, which is good. Um, not that I'm gonna, you know, put a lot of load on this, but now I just need to cut this shape out uh, of both of them. So I'm gonna do that. Get the little bounce on. I'm just going to clean this up on a sander. Alright, now that I've got the uh, cutouts made, which does affect the strength a little bit, this is going to add the reinforcement. Um, I'm looking for to keep it rigid again. But also gives me that, this will be like the point at which I index the tool off of. So this, this now will come into here and be the index. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, so as it slides down the dowel, okay, now so after I get this all glued on, then I'm going to have to drill the hole for the dowel. Alright guys, what I need to do now is uh, I've got this glued, to, got, I've got these glued together, and um, I just need to drill out at where the hole is. Um, I've got a silver and Deming 9 16 uh, bit in the drill press and if you guys don't have a set of these you might want to consider them this is a the silver and Deming set from Harbor Freight they have um, odd sizes and by that I mean in between sizes if you have the Harbor Freight Forstner bit set then you'll know that sometimes you need sixteenths in between some of the measurements you have on the standard Forstner bit set so that the silver and Deming set um, gives you some of those in between sizes. So, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill these out. Okay, guys, here are the two pieces of the uh, depth gauge completed. Okay, the PVC on the dowel with the hose clamp, and then the uh, cross member. Uh, that is the actual, I guess, gauge, if you will. So the way this works, again, you this is a this is a cheater stick, and uh, let me move this down a little bit so you can see maybe see this better. You do this by um, uh, putting this dowel up against the uh, housing of your headstock, and then you bring the PVC. Uh, to where it's flush with the edge of the bowl, okay? And tighten that up, okay? Now, remember that this is equal to the distance from here to the end of my chuck jaws, okay? So, um, then you take this piece, okay? And you set it across the bowl, so you can see what's going on. Put it on this side, okay? So you can see this here. And what happens is when you slide this now, into the hole, okay, you'll see how thick the bottom of this bowl is, okay? Now that's not stuck there, that's, that is actually how far it is, and I'll just put that up against there, okay? But you can see right here, do you see how that bottom piece of plywood is um, inside the actual bowl, okay? So this becomes your, um, this is the registration here, that when you slide this on, you can see I've left what uh, amounts to about a half an inch of thickness uh, so far in the bottom of this bowl. Okay, so I could take that down much further um, to where I may be a quarter inch or or even less. Okay, so that's how that gauge works. Okay, it just goes on the bowl. You put that in there, and that the distance from the end of the PVC to this, um, the top of the uh, uh, bot bottom piece of plywood is the, your, your thickness indicator. So, that simple. Well, Turners, there it is. Again, the uh, uh, completed uh, bowl depth gauge. Um, again, uh, uh, inspired by Reed Gray and his uh, cheater stick technique, um, this uh, is going to be 
more useful to me than just the old cheater stick method that I used to use. Um, Reed, I just want to, again, give you the, the credit and the acknowledgement for the idea. Um, and uh, again, hopefully you guys found this video uh, entertaining and useful. You can make one of your own. Um, very handy uh, when you're hollowing bowls and, and other types of vessels. So, um, Thanks to all my new subscribers and my old subscribers and all my viewers. If you guys um, uh, would check out my channel, um, please go take a look at some of the other awesome woodworkers and wood turners that I subscribe to, as well as some of my other videos. Um, again, I don't monetize these videos. Uh, not my intent to put anybody through a bunch of commercials. Um, you know, nothing against those that do, but that just is not my thing. So, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you for the next one.